All right, guys. We're a little sore. But we have a little recovery to do. Because the Royal Rumble just happened. And we're going to review it. And there were some good things. Yeah. There were also some not so good things. Yeah. And we're going to talk about both of those things on the Wrestling Rundown. I'd like to welcome you to episode 33. Yep, 33. 33. 33 episode 33. Strong. 33 years? <laughs> Holy crap. We are Ron Simmons, Two Cold Scorpio, and Booker T, The Old Day. <laughs> yes! I like it. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. So... I tried to do that really fast. That didn't work. Yeah. Just, just to get it out of the way... The Royal Rumble was a day ago, and um, pre-show match, uh, the Masters beat the New Day members Kofi Kingston and Biggie Langston. Which it, yeah, it became a tag team match because apparently Xavier Woods' ankle wasn't uh, healed. It, it wasn't healed enough to do the. Well, originally it was supposed to be a six-person elimination. Yeah, I yeah. I still haven't caught the pre-show. Spoiler I w- alert, the Masters won. I watched it after the Rumble, and so I was kind of out of it. I, I just re- didn't really care anymore. Yeah, yeah, no, I, as you two know, I woke up like 20 right before. minutes before the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, after waking up, getting ready for my day, and then turning it on, I missed the match, and then after the Rumble, I just haven't cared enough to go back and watch it yet. Fair enough. Um, the Ascension beat the New Age Outlaws. Yep. The Usos retained the tag titles over Miz and Damian Mizdow, and the Bella Twins defeated uh, Paige and Natalia in the Divas tag match. Brock Lesnar retained the championship in the three-way match with Cena and Rollins, and Roman Reigns is the winner of the 2015 Royal Rumble. So, I think in this segment, we're going to talk about all the good stuff that happened Prior to the Triple Threat Championship match. Yeah. Um, Starting with, except for Mr. Wolf, the pre, pre-show pre match. Yeah. Um, like I said, I I watched... My WWE Network was messing with me. It wouldn't let me watch the pre-show first. Uh, I even had... I have a story about the WWE Network messing with me. Okay. Uh, I even tried watching... Like, I even had a little bit of trouble trying to watch the Royal Rumble at first. Because I was like... You know, the... The network likes to skip forward a little bit. And I didn't want I didn't want anything to be spoiled, so I actually waited till the rumble was officially over to start watching it. Um, and so I had a little bit of issue. So yeah, I didn't watch the pre-show match until afterwards, and was already kind of taken out of it. So I vaguely remember. I know that Tyson Kidd won. They did uh, like double finishers, kind of. To for, they did the. Uh, I know Tyson won with his fisherman, mm-hmm. fisherman neck breaker. Yeah, the end, the end spot I thought was pretty cool is that Tyson Kidd goes for the O'Connor roll on Kofi. That's right. Kofi reverses it, O'Connor roll on to Kidd. Kidd shoves Kofi through gets, the ropes, and he gets a European uppercut directly in the neck. Yeah. He gets, yeah, Europe, Cesaro, stiff European uppercut directly in the neck of Kofi Kingston into... The uh, Fisherman's Neckbreaker from yeah. Tyson Kidd for the finish. The match, in my opinion, was one of the strongest matches on the card. I was disappointed that even going into it, they didn't announce that Xavier Woods and Adam Rose had been taken out of the match. As the pre-show was going on, the graphic showed six-man tag. Or see, the graphic showed elimination tag and had all six guys on. See, when I went back and watched... They did change it up. They had Adam Rose and Xavier Woods kind of like in the small back. and in the back, and then they had the other four prompts. See, what I was going to say was they didn't change it, just Woods and Rose were already eliminated by the time the match started. Uh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out the entire match, Adam Rose's attire, because he was very pseudo-97 Hulk Hogan wearing the black and white feather boa and lightning strikes on his tights. Instead of Hollywood, it said Rose. Rose. Uh, This was the cosplay year for the Royal Rumble. It was. It was. (laughs) As we'll get into later. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it was all inspired from 
Damien Mizdow. Yeah. He's uh, he started a trend. Yeah. I mean, we we saw it earlier uh, with you know, Paige doing Summer Ray in the Divas Hall- Halloween Battle Royal. Yep. yep. Uh, we watched Brie Bella do AJ, and we watched AJ do Nikki Bella. Yeah. So we've had a lot of wrestler cosplays as each yeah. other in the last few years, uh, or last year. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Damien Sandow. Trendsetter. <laughs> but the Miz would take credit for that if he heard us. Um, but yeah, it was a very to watch show. <laughs> it was probably <laughs> the most athletic out of all the matches in the Rumble. Yeah. Oh no doubt. Um, like, not even seeing it, I just there's no doubt in my mind. But I mean, I'm gonna say that nothing too special came out of it. Big E did his spear through the ropes spot as per usual. The um, crowd ate the New Day alive. It's oh, I'm sure it was. It's the it's Philadelphia. I understand. It's even weird watching the Rosebuds come out to Cesaro's theme than it was watching <laughs> them come out to Tyson Kidd's theme song. Yeah. At, at least there's like Cesaro's theme song. It seems like they should have been moshing to the ring. Like at least there's like kind of a, kind of a, there's there's something that they can dance to with Tyson's, da 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 da, you know yeah. they they can kind of get into it. But Cesaro's is just fucking it's metal, yeah, yeah. sort of. It's just scary music. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was neat, I guess. They had uh, Booker T, Byron Saxon, and Corey Graves as the pre-show panel. I was... really like Corey Graves on these panels. I just appreciate that it's not Alex Riley. Yeah. Yeah. The analyst was Byron Saxton. Yeah. Which was nice. I don't care who's on the panel. Just get rid of Alex fucking Riley. Alex Riley's the white Titus O'Neil for Kevin Hawk. <laughs> well, what if they put them as a tag team? I might kill myself. Oh. Why kill yourself when you could just kill them? It'd be a suicide bombing. <laughs> it, I'd be going down for a noble cause. Um, uh, then we opened up the Rumble with the Ascension versus the New Age Outlaws. I was actually surprised this was the opener. I wasn't. Because I feel like the New Age Outlaws are like, let's get out there, get our shit done, and <laughs> go back and relax as fast as we can. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean... Billy got a huge pop right off the bat because he had a great spot yeah. at the beginning. Well, they were just over right off the bat because as soon as they came out for their entrance, they were ass-kissing the city of Philadelphia oh, yeah. with Road Dogs spiel on the way to the ring. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that Billy Gunn wrestled shirtless despite the fact of having kept his shirt on during their entire heel run last year. He hadn't fully gotten his physique back. <laughs> And since he's been out since Mania, he's had time to. Yeah. Build, he's like, uh, it looks he's like, like I, I know they're gonna call me back. I need to. I need yeah. to work on myself. Coughing up blood does wonders for your abs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, Shield. He also cut his hair. Um, yes. So. He's yeah. Uh, he's back to Billy and Chuck haircut. Yeah, but yeah, it was a good. It was a solid match. I I yeah I think this was definitely the best thing the Ascension's done. Yeah. You know, since before they got into their thing with uh, Hideo and Finn, because mm-hmm. they've, I mean, they lost twice yeah. against them, and then the word, so, you know, we're trying to be dominant on the main roster, and it just wasn't happening. Well, but I mean, I they were being dominant. Just, it's just, they're being down, they were being downplayed by JBL, they're only squashing jobbers, uh, you know, I just, the poor booking of the fact that they had their initial match against an established tag team right. and then got moved back to squishing jobbers. Yeah. yeah. And now they're uh, on this on the prowl to become the dominant tag team like they brag they are. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, what I really like about it and I hope they choose this direction is that they didn't crush the outlaws. No, they just they, 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 they straight beat they, them. but they I in my opinion they skimmed by the skin of their teeth. Oh yeah, because, because the they, outlaws were winning. Oh, absolutely. And it just became a bit of like move out of the way of the famouser. He shoves Billy, or he moves out of the way of the famouser, shoves Billy Gunn into Connor, who gives him the snake eyes on the 
top rope and then gets in and they do the fall of man. Yeah. yeah. It was a really quick finish. It was after. a gr- I liked the finish a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was well, very fluid and it was like the best setup for the fall of man. So yeah. what I'm hoping happens after this is because of the fact that they didn't have like a huge we crushed the New Age Outlaws kind of victory is I hope they come out on SmackDown or Raw and claim that they did yeah. crush the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I, I thought you were building up to it. No, you guys said pretty much what. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I had been trying to say something, but you guys just... So what I will say, because <laughs> uh, it wasn't mentioned, I freaking loved when Billy Gunn got tagged in and threw, who was it, Connor or Victor? I think it was Connor out. And he's like, get out of here! Yeah, get out, Connor. Get out of here. He was, I like that he, he was throwing Victor around. Yeah. I like <laughs> It was funny because he chucked, he let go of Connor about three quarters of the way to the ring, and Connor just kept running and threw himself over the top rope. Anyway, because <laughs> he said, "Get out of here." And <laughs> Connor's like, "Yes, yes. sir." <laughs> okay. And the uh, thing that I got a big kick out of is when Road Dog dove for the hot tag spot with Billy. He like jumped, did the tag, and then dove through the ropes to get out of the ring. Yeah. 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 I'm done. Uh, like, I've never seen Road Dog dive before. Yeah, I mean. Outlaws look great. Uh, I, you know, they still got it. The fact that the Ascension, you know, actually had to work for their victory, uh, I appreciated it more than I have a lot of, well, actually, pretty much any of the matches that the Ascension have won. Yeah. Because um, I think since losing the tag titles to the Lucha Dragons, they haven't won anything. Prominent. Prominent, yeah. He's a, I yeah. like the, uh, the new. Uh, they did new designs on their eyes. Yeah, they, yeah. Rather than bo- doing like rather both than of them doing... are doing their own. Yeah, like, they, like they've got. Yeah, I I like that I'm, too. I'm hoping that they bring in some more old teams. You know, I, I was cool. thinking about it. I think yeah, bringing in too cool, uh, having X Pac and maybe Nash. Like I don't I don't think Nash would. I don't think Nash would probably put the new guys over. But maybe X Pac would. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, ha, ha, you know, have um, Nash be the one that gets knocked off the apron. Yeah. Have Nash Pac. isn't taking the fall, man. Yeah. That's that's too risky for his knees. Yeah, yeah. have well, ha, having have somebody the size of Connor just charging for his knees. Yeah. yeah, and then you, I mean, and have more nostalgia. Have Scott Hall out there in their corner. So, but yeah, you know, yeah, the NWO too cool. You know, there's hey, cheese. There's yeah, there's so many people they could bring back. They could they could bring back Al Snow and Steve Black. Well, uh, Al Snow's yeah. still. The TNA. Who cares? <laughs> Just saying. I don't think it's going to matter. I thought of, <laughs> like, despite Lucha Underground being a thing, I thought they could bring in John Morrison and have him team with Joey Mercury. Yeah. That'd be good. That'd be cool. You I'm, know? Because I'm starting to have a feeling that J&J Security aren't going to be hanging around with Seth Rollins for too much longer. Yeah. Probably not. They keep uh, getting fucked up. Yeah. Um, All right, so let's good go Good match. And, yeah. Uh, let's go move forward. The Tag Team Championship match. Uh, Miz down Miz versus the Usos. Uh, We've seen it. Yeah, that's the biggest complaint. Is like, yeah, it was a, the match was solid, but it was just nothing new, and nothing. There was nothing that really got me excited. The only thing I really liked was the end spot, yeah. where uh, one of the Usos went to do the sunset bomb, and the other Uso super kicked the Miz's arm to get him to let go of the rope. Yeah, the and one... then it turned into the sideways yeah. Uso splash. The one thing I was really hoping for. Was that when Miz was on the rope, on the top rope, and Miz Dow was on the top rope, I was hoping that the Uso was going to go for a superplex, and that Miz Dow was going to have to phantom superplex. I was kind of hoping for the same thing. I, w- I would have been impressed if he could phantom superplex himself. That would have been... Um, that would have been interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the the greatest thing about this <laughs> is that, like, Miz Dow was so fucking over. I really like I really hope that the Miz and Miz Dow split doesn't end before something happens to Miz and Miz Dow goes to my mate and is like, fuck that. <laughs> nope. Everyone's like expecting him to take the bump. He's like, no, that'll hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um like a cage match and he and Miz is climbing and then like they the Usos, because they wrestle a billion times, they'll probably yeah. wrestle some more. Like, hook his legs and, like, double power bomb ish him off the cage. <laughs> and the Uso's like, come on, Miz Dow. Uh-uh. <laughs> There's something like, 
somebody puts the Miz through a table, and Damian Sandow gets under the ring and he pulls out his own table and he like climbs yeah. up onto the ring apron and goes, "You know what?" <laughs> and and that's how this, that's how the split happens. He just leaves. He's yeah. like, "Nope, not doing it." Uh, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. The greatest thing was that you know, if there if we couldn't make a Mizdow pop louder, we'll put him in Philadelphia. Yeah. And the Philadelphia crowd is just so fucking loud mm-hmm. and so vocal about who they like and who they don't that it didn't matter how Wait, over they the... like Mizdow. What they liked Mizdow in Philly. No, they hated him. Oh, uh, thought so. Uh, it didn't matter how over the Usos... Because I'm, I'm sure the Philly crowd likes the Usos. Probably. I'm sure they don't hate the Usos. But the fact that Mizdow was in the match, the Usos got none of the love. Yeah. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> honorable mention goes to they all dove. Yeah. By they yeah. all, I mean the Usos. Yeah. One of them got caught by Miz Dow, the other one didn't get caught by the Miz. <laughs> yeah. That was probably my actual favorite spot of the match. Because you had Miz and Miz down the outside, and I think it was Jimmy who went to die first, and Miz pulled him down on the top row. Yeah. And then you got Jay Dove and he pulled Miz Dow in the way and Jay hits Miz Dow. And then Jimmy and then he close line, well he clotheslines Jay. Yeah. And then turns into the right the like, last second to not, Not catch, catch Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> do the, or Jimmy do um, the fucking somersault dive. Yeah. Then we had Divas match. Yeah, the Divas tag <sighs> match it, was a thing. Yeah. Um, the Very. Bellas were way more dominant than I anticipated them being. Maybe maybe that's why Paige and Natalia were fucking off. They're like, yeah. oh my god, we're being dominated by the Bellas. Uh, <laughs> I did okay like that. There is still uh, in, a in the theme that we were talking about over the past week or two of like the Bellas becoming uh, more focused on targeting a body part and working on it. They did the same thing with the arm. Yeah, and you know I was I watched it by myself, so I was like self commentating. Uh, working the arm in a tag team match makes sense be, because you can have Bree put on the yes lock. Yeah. So yeah. The also, one- working an arm in a tag team match makes it harder to tag. That too. Uh, and then I thought my favorite spot was actually uh, Natalia and Paige did the double stalling suplex on Brie. Yeah, that was that, yeah, cool. that was pretty cool. Um, now yeah, they got an electric chair drop on Nikki. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. The the her whole like picking Nikki up was really cool. I um, like in any tag team match. I really like because we talked about this. before. Before I don't think we talked about it on the show, but we talked about it just amongst ourselves. I like any like really clever spot, clever ways of putting your body between uh, your opponents and the person they want to tag. Yeah. So I really liked when I think it was Bree who like walked over Natty's back. Mm-hmm. And oh got, right, yeah. And got between them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was there it, was it could have been so much better. It just, there was something off. Yeah. There, the one thing that uh, comes to mind for me is when Natty actually tags Paige, but Brie grabs Natty and, like, oh, slams her to the ground and tries to pin her, and the ref is going, well, no, there's, they tagged. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it's throwing me off because the ref's not counting the pin, which he shouldn't be. Natty wasn't the legal person in the ring. But at the same time, I'm also feeling a little off because Paige isn't getting in the ring yeah, after the tag. That's what threw me off was like, you know, especially with, you know, the fact that she comes from yeah, she is a third generation really wrestler. Awesome it's like spot. shouldn't like shouldn't Paige have known, okay, she's not coming in, I need to go in and right. and attack her. That's that's what I should do. It, yeah, that I think that that was the whole thing. I was like, what what the what the fuck yeah. is going on right now? Like and like Bree didn't realize what was going on and it was just it was just so much confusion, and I think I, that I can't was, remember how the tag went. Could it have maybe been an accidental tag? I like okay, like an I, unplanned tag. I, like I, I kind of thought it looked like they were maybe going for a high five, but then it also looked real deliberate because or Natty had Brie, yeah, and she went and she tagged Paige, okay, and then Brie like reverse well, reverse something well, no, my, my and went for the pin. Is like not not an unplanned tag, but like. They tagged too early? Maybe. I think they did that initially earlier in the match. Uh, because there was a spot where uh, Natty tags Paige in. 
and I thought they were going to go for something and they didn't do it and like Paige tagged out really fast after doing like one move and then I felt like they had did they did do a pre thing but I don't yeah. think it was the same thing you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, um, the, yeah, there, there was a real fast this, exchange. There's a lot of awkward yeah, tags. This was going on. it was a weird match. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Bellas win. Yeah. Bella uh, Bree got the No, Nikki. Was it? Yeah. Um, yeah the... Natty was crawling for the tag. Uh, Paige was oh, reaching in. Bree uh, ran That's around right. and yanked Paige off the uh, apron very violently. Yeah. Natty got up and got hit with the bionic forearm from yep. Nikki. That's right. Okay. And uh, yeah. got pinned. So I'm hoping there was much consoling done backstage between Natty and Paige. Yeah. And Dude. much celebrating going on between. Brie and Nikki, as awkward as that would be, if not awkward for the male viewers. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be, you know, for me, the pre-show match was the best one, in my opinion. I gave that one an A. Uh, Ascension vs. Outlaw is a B. Uh, Miz vs. Uso is a B. And the Divas tag got a C-. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I... Th I I think I, I'd give it a C, yeah. a, just a straight C, just because, I mean, I, I think the awkwardness is what gives it the lower grade, but, I mean, it was still four very talented girls, and they went out and they did what they could. That's that's what happened with me, though, is, like, I don't feel like they went out and did what they could, because if they did what they could, it would have been better. Meh. That was my thing. Is I I went in with a really high expectation. Yeah, I, I think we all did. And so that, that's, that's why I gave it such a low score. Is <laughs> that it just didn't come anywhere near my expectations. Yeah, it wasn't like it came short. It was like it fell. Yeah, yeah. off it plateaued really fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's the the undercard. Um, we're gonna be moving on to a part two, uh, which is those, also the raw review. Yeah. For those of you that aren't aware, I don't know why you, you wouldn't be. But Maybe Raw, Raw was canceled today uh, due to... Well, they still uh, had Raw. Yeah. It was the live event. Yeah, live event was canceled due to a blizzard in Connecticut. It, ha was... it so happened to be that Raw was scheduled to be in Connecticut, home of the WWE headquarters. Yeah. yeah. So all the WWE superstars were already in Connecticut, and all they had to do was bring in uh, like a half a dozen of the superstars and the commentary team to WWE headquarters. Yeah. And they did, basically, they'll recap uh, the two main events from the Rumble and do yeah. a bunch of interviews. Yeah, so we'll be doing a part two where we'll talk about the Triple Threat Championship match. We'll talk about the Royal Rumble. And then I've got a few kind of random things that I thought were interesting. So we'll talk about a little bit of news and we will talk about the two big matches from the Royal Rumble. So yeah, let the players keep playing. The for, Rumble review. For part two. Go that way. Josh, stay where you're at. Let the video go. Yeah. Do something. Or nothing. Video change. Now.